We find that most times, um, in the organizations we work in, or who we are as people, we focus on programming. We focus on implementation of our programs. But there's one thing that all of us shy away from, or most of us, let me not generalize, and that's advocacy. When Young Love started, they never looked at advocacy. They were looking at HIV programming. How do we get to this to the children? How do we implement programs? We forgot about making the environment conducive for what it is that we're doing. And a lot of organizations tend to do that. The donor is giving us money to go and implement, so we're taking that money and we're going to implement. Whose responsibility is it to make the environment conducive? We're not quiet. Some of us talk. You're generalizing. Not all of us are quiet. So if, I won't say silence because silence is going to touch the wrong spots. And I'll say we do minimized advocacy in this country. Is it enough that I have spoken to you guys about this? Should I now go back to my office and say, check, I have done it? It's enough. No, it's not enough. I have a chart here. It's probably not a young girl the same age like her was murdered in Mubarak. And she was so frightened. She didn't feel protected. She didn't feel safe. You know, how does this happen next door? And this 10-year-old girl, true story, wrote a letter to the president, telling the president, I don't feel safe. I don't, I don't know who the president was at that time, but I'm assuming it was, I don't know how to say it. And she said, I don't feel safe in the country. You know, how can someone just walk in the house and kill a child. What did the child do wrong, you know? What if they come after me? And the amazing thing was, the president replied. He sent a letter back to this young girl, telling her how you should not feel, you know, you should not feel like you're not safe. There's the police which is in place that will ensure that you're safe, and even us, as you know, will come up with laws and all those things. So me saying this is just basically to say that Sometimes, when we do certain actions, we do not know what we do, we do not know what outcomes will come. And we think we're so insignificant that even if I do this, it will not be noted. A 10-year-old wrote a letter to the president. What is stopping this whole room from writing letters to the president? My mother will not know I've written a letter to the president. My friends will not know. But I just write to the president and say, you see that man? Who raped and killed the nine year old? That's the reason we still have the death sentence in the If all of us, how many are we? One, two, three, four, we have 20 plus minus. If the president gets 20 plus letters in his office saying that man should not be shown any mercy, guys, I'm not advocating for that. <laughs> <laughs> as, as a, you know, as, it's interesting, this whole human rights thing, because. Uh, this is now also answering the next question because though I'm an activist, an advocate, I call myself advocate, though I know primarily I do social media advocacy. As an advocate, it's not every human rights thing that comes about that I'm going to jump on and advocate for it. This one I was pushing for the abolishment of the death penalty. Will I jump on that bad word? Bad word. What happens to these men who rape and kill nine year olds? What happens to them? My money that I pay tax, not I pay tax because I wake up every morning to go to the office, is going to feed you after you've raped and killed a nine year old. You see, that's my stance. We all have different stances for different things. Okay? So now, for me, it's like there are different actions that you can do in the advocacy space that can actually get noticed or get attention to it. I know some people get bored with I was working at the One Campaign, um, it's based in South Africa, and we do advocacy to issues to eliminate poverty in Africa. And those are some of the strategies that we use. We get people to write letters to your council, telling them what they think about this recent law that has been done. You know? uh, we do postcards. We have postcards where we tell people, fill in a postcard. When we go to the AU summit, we're going to present your postcards to the AU leaders so that they can see that people from their country are not happy with certain things that the AU is doing. You know? um, we tell them, identify your councillors on social media and include them in your tweet. Imagine if you've got, if we organize 500 young people in Botswana to tweet at the Minister of Justice. 
all asking for the same thing, that we need justice to be sure. Imagine if all of us had written a letter when that Sabina saga happened, saying, hey, this man should, should be, he, he should resign. If, if 10,000 Botswana had done it, 10,000, could the result have been different? But when do we coordinate ourselves to be able to actually speak as a united voice? I keep telling people I'm an African in Africa who loves my continent too. I love Africa. And people keep asking me, why are you still in Africa? You could work in the States. I don't want to work in the States. I want to build hope. I, I really want to build this continent of ours. So for me, it's like, even as much as I want to build it, an Afrocentric would be best, as in the community. This community is stuck in having female genital mutilation to 10 year olds. I'm not going to go with that, but instead I'm going to figure out how can I infiltrate the community so that they're able to see that this culture we're holding on is problematic. And instead, can we, at least because of the, back then there was no HIV AIDS, for example, so I could use the same blade on 15 girls. It was fine. But now, you want to use the same blade on 15 girls. We can start telling you all the different diseases you're going to put in girl number 15. So it's rather giving them that education. And that's, that's still using Afrocentric, because I'm going back to the community, but it's just finding different strategies of doing, of giving them that information, rather than say, stop it, stop FGM, stop it, stop it, stop it. Why are we using our culture for a culture which is not ours? Let us adjust it, let us improve it, let us make it less riskier.